Dennis Banks speaking at the 1978 Whole Earth Festival at the University of California, Davis. Recorded by United Earth Fund and United Earth News with Dennis Banks' permission. Dennis was 80 years old and passed on October 29th, 2017. I'd like to uh, talk a little, first of all, about uh, the meaning of whole earth so that we might understand where we go from this afternoon, how we can take the meaning of whole earth to next week, next year, and continue in that kind of understanding for the rest of our lives. You know, we have, when we are born, we, have, we are born with responsibilities. Responsibilities not only to ourselves and to our community, but we are born with a responsibility to Mother Earth. And down throughout the years, man has progressed or regressed, however you want to look at it, to a point where we have, we have become in a position of abandoning our responsibilities to Mother Earth. In abandoning our responsibilities, we have caused much destruction to happen, much destruction to happen to, to this earth. And Mother Earth, of course, has a, has a responsibility also to us. And if we abuse our responsibilities to Mother Earth, then the abuse will come back to us. And the earth, of course, will, will refuse to produce the necessary elements that we need to live. It will fail to produce the, the oxygen. It will fail to produce the clean streams and the waters that we need to survive. It will fail to produce the trees. It will fail to produce the, the vegetation, particularly in the, in the equator belts, that we need to resupply the world's oxygen, oxygen supply. And so we must understand what whole earth means. It, it does not only mean the exchanging of gifts here in, a, in, a, in an atmosphere of, of, of thanksgiving. We must understand whole earth in terms of how we survive as a human being. If we do not have that understanding, then whole earth means nothing to us. There is no meaning in whole earth. And so all of us that are within the, that are within earshot of this, this message and who are listening to the bands and the music today should now become missionaries for Mother Earth. Missionaries that will create a clean environment. Missionaries that will cre create a chance for survival for Mother Earth. If there is no survival for Mother Earth, then we are doomed as a people. We are doomed as a people. Throughout the, throughout the last 25, 30 years, there has been a massive amount of exploration and mining in various parts of the United States. I want to talk to probably about two areas. The Grants, New Mexico area, where there is massive strip mining going on to extract the, the, the uranium ore from Mother Earth. We understand also, and those of us who were just out there this past weekend, we know that there is minimal minimum amount 
60 million tons of uranium mill tailings that have been abandoned by the uranium, com uranium companies of Kermagee and Utah International. They have been abandoned. No reclamation near the town of Shiprock. 1,500,000 tons of uranium mill tailings. No reclamation. And so it is drifting. And it is blowing with the winds. And it is being scattered. Scattered so that the people will be able to and will enter the food chain of human beings. Already has, has entered the streams around Grants, New Mexico. Already the fish are carrying it. Already the sheep, already the cattle. And so the food chain, you know, we are next in line. And already I would, I would believe that we are already contaminated with the mill tailings of the uranium industry. We saw the, the other side of the uranium process in the last month at Three Mile Island. We saw how far we as a, as a race of people have progressed. We have seen now the, the, the real understanding of the China Syndrome. We know now what it means. So we need, we need to understand whole earth, whole earth to mean the stopping of uranium mining and to stop the nuclear production, not only of, of the war machines and the bombs, but of the nuclear plants in this country. We must stop it on both ends. There's, there's two or three, there are three probably uh, phases, the actual mining and then the usage, the, 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 the nuclear plants, and then of course the waste itself. What are we going to do with the waste? What are we going to do with the radioactive waste? Well, in it, in it, <laughs> that's right, we'll send it to Washington, D.C. But one thing, but one thing we should understand is that if we have, we are born with the responsibility to protect Mother Earth, we should make every effort to make sure that Mother Earth is not contaminated with the wastes of Washington, D.C. The wastes of the nu nuclear uranium industry is not only hurting our generations, it's going to hurt generations from now until 200,000 years. Some of this stuff has a half-life of 100,000 years. So a full life would mean 200,000 years. North of us, there's Toxaphene and north of Chico. We were there yesterday, and we saw the effects of the Toxaphene of the United States government that is spraying on the cattle. We have seen the cattle that, that are aborting their own babies inside of them. And we saw 500 stillborn calves yesterday morning north of Chico. And we saw the, the, the remains of them. We saw what toxaphene is doing to the plants. No grass is growing. So we have, we, we should have a good understanding of what whole earth is. We should have a better understanding of what our responsibilities are to and for and from Mother Earth. If we fail, if we fail, of course, it is our own failure. And, uh, and our lifespan will become shorter. We will maybe live 20 years. The deformities will begin to appear. Retardation in our young children will begin, and we will we will soon die out as a race of people. 
But I know that Native American people in this country have made a statement in the last two or three years that we are also sick and tired of the abuse that this country is, is developing on Indian reservations, particularly the uranium industry, particularly the coal industry. They are leaving the waste there. They say, we want the electricity in, in San Francisco. We want the electricity in, in Los Angeles. We want the electricity in San Diego. But we do not want the waste that it creates. And this is what they've been saying for the last 20 years. Well, in the last four days, in a statement prepared in Grants, New Mexico, by a coalition of Native American people, that they will do everything in their power to stop the uranium mining on the reservations. Stop them completely. And we need the help of, of non-Indian people all across this country, off the reservation. You've always asked, what can you do to help Native Americans? And the real question is, what, do, what, what, do you, what can you do to help yourself? That's how we're going to be finally united, is uranium. Uranium construction, we must stop the uranium processing wherever it's at. That's right. Stop it. No more nukes. 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 Thank you very much. Stop them. Wherever you see them, stop the plants, stop the trains, stop the trucks from rolling, stop uranium wherever it's at. Thank you very much. Dennis Banks, one of the, the prime movers of the whole Native people's movement. Dennis was talking about caring for this earth. I just want, you know, all the time Dennis was talking, I kept thinking of this, this matter of responsibility and the ability to respond is what it's all about. And it's, we're being asked to do that from everywhere. Uh, the, uh, the solar energy petition is here and they'll probably still be passing among you so you can respond that way too. Those are these yellow sheets, letters to President Carter to initiate solar power. Made available using Creative Commons International 4.0 license, BYNAND, United Earth Fund and United Earth News.